let's take a look at how we could graph the position of this car over time as it moves. To do that, we'll start by listing the position of the car at different points in time, as if someone was standing on the side of the road with a stopwatch and recording the position of the car at different times. So let's say the car is driving forward like this. At the very beginning, the position of the car is 0 meters, and after 1 second, the car's position is 5 meters, after 2 seconds, the car's position is 10 meters, and after 3 seconds, the position is 15 meters. Now we have a table showing the car's position at different points in time. So what would a graph of the car's position over time look like? We'll start with an empty graph where the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, represents time, and the y-axis, or the vertical axis, represents the position of the car on the road. Now, it might seem weird that we're putting the car's horizontal position on the vertical axis of the graph, but the reason is we always put time on the horizontal axis. That will make more sense throughout the course, but for now, just know that we always put time on the horizontal axis of a graph. So, how do we graph the position of this car over time? We start by plotting the points that we have in the table on the left. When time equals 0 seconds, the position of the car is 0 meters, so we'll plot that point on the graph where time is 0 and position is 0. Next, when time equals 1 second, the position of the car is 5 meters, so we'll plot the point where time equals 1 and position equals 5. We also have points for when time equals 2 seconds, and the position is 10 meters, and when time equals 3 seconds, and the position is 15 meters. Now that we have some data points on our graph, we can connect the points with lines like this. And there we go. For this car's motion, we've graphed the position versus time, and now we have another way to visualize that motion.